Hi there, Nicholas Cameron here from First Formations and welcome to another episode of Whiteboard Thursdays, the series where we take a look at all of the aspects of running a limited company in the UK. So if you want to keep up to date with our insights, advice and inspiration, then please do hit that subscribe button. But for now, let's get started. Today, I want to walk you through how you can lower your company's tax bill with some of the lesser known allowable expenses that your company is probably not claiming. Now, before we dive into what you can claim, let's explain what we mean by allowable expenses. Allowable expenses are essential business costs that you need to make in order to keep your company up and running. Allowable expenses are all tax deductible, which means that HMRC allows you to offset those expenses against your annual tax bill. The translation of that is if you spent money on an allowable expense, you don't have to pay tax on that money. For example, let's say your company made £50,000 last year, but you spent £10,000 on allowable expenses. That means HMRC would only ask you to pay tax on the £40,000. But listen closely here, because there are still important rules you need to follow when claiming expenses. Generally speaking, you don't have to send in records and receipts with your tax returns each year. But you absolutely must keep records of all of your expenses. And you've got to show those records to HMRC if they ever ask you for proof of your expenses. So now that we know what allowable expenses are, let's talk about which expenses you should be claiming. There are loads of expenses that HMRC allows you to claim as a limited company. And you probably already know the big ones like office supplies, tools, and business car mileage. That's just the tip of the iceberg. If you want to lower your tax bill even further, you should make sure that you're claiming these 13 lesser known allowable expenses. So let's get to it. Number one, you can claim the cost of setting up your limited company. Now, this might not seem like the biggest overhead you're going to experience when you start up a business, but of course, every little helps. HMRC allows you to claim legal and professional expenses, which includes work from a solicitor, accountant, or a company formation agent like us. That means the total amount you spent legally incorporating your UK company through Companies House, that's the UK's company registrar, is tax deductible. Now, number two, you should be claiming your annual company Christmas party. We all know that festive get-togethers are great for employee morale. But did you know that a lot of the cash you spend entertaining your staff can actually be claimed as an allowable expense on your company's taxes? You're exempt from paying HMRC tax on any work party or social event, provided that it is an annual event, like a Christmas party or a summer barbecue. You only spend £150 or less per person on the party. And the party must be open to all of your employees. If your business has more than one location, whatever you spend on the Christmas party or other celebration at that location will still be tax deductible as long as it's open to all of the staff at that location. You can even put on separate parties for different departments within your company and claim it all as an expense. Just make sure that everyone who works for you is invited to at least one of those parties. Now, number three, you should be claiming bad debt like unpaid invoices. We've all experienced the disappointment and frustration of working hard to fulfill a client's order, but then sitting and waiting for an invoice to be settled. And sometimes those invoices may never get paid at all. Fortunately, HMRC allows you to claim those unpaid invoices against your company's income when filing your taxes. If you're using traditional accounting, you're able to claim any amount of money included in your company's turnover that you aren't expecting to receive. This is called bad debt, and you're allowed to claim every item of bad debt 
as long as you are totally sure that the invoices you're claiming won't ever be recovered. Now this is important. HMRC does not allow you to claim bad debt if you're using cash basis accounting. That's because cash basis accounting only records the money you've actually received. But as long as you're using traditional accounting, it's okay to claim for unpaid invoices. Now number four, you should be claiming your company's broadband. The internet is so important in our daily lives now that a lot of company owners don't even think of it as a business expense. But HMRC allows you to claim the cost of installation and the running costs of broadband as long as it is related to your business. That means you can deduct the costs associated with setting up a broadband contract for your work premises, home office, as long as it's in your limited company's name, or even at the homes of your employees if your company is footing the bill. Now it's important to note that if you're claiming for broadband, it's got to be primarily for business use. HMRC accepts that there will be some occasional personal use, but you must keep records and be able to demonstrate the expenses associated with the given broadband contract are in some way required for maintaining a business operation. Now number five, you can claim for mobile telephones. If you bought yourself a mobile phone or taken out a mobile contract for work purposes, this is tax deductible. Not only that, but HMRC also allows you to claim for any expense you incur providing your employees with mobile phone services. That means if your limited company provides an employee, including yourself, with one mobile phone and or one SIM card for use uh, for work purposes, it is an allowable expense. Likewise, if your company pays a monthly contract directly to a mobile service provider on behalf of yourself or an employee, the expenses associated with those contracts are all tax deductible. But remember, if your employee contributes anything towards their work-based mobile phone, for example, through a salary sacrifice, that means it is not tax deductible. Your company has to pick up the cost in order to claim it as a business expense. If your employees use their own personal mobiles and you re reimburse them for that, your company will still need to deduct and pay class one national insurance and pay YE through payroll. Number six, you should be claiming bicycle mileage. You may already be claiming for van mileage or car mileage, but what you may not have realized is that you can also be claiming bike mileage as a business expense. If you or your employees use a bicycle for work purposes, every mile traveled is tax deductible. And unlike cars or vans, the amount per mile you're allowed to claim as an expense doesn't change no matter how many miles you have traveled. You are permitted to claim 20 pence per mile for work-related bicycle trips. This can be claimed as an allowable expense by your limited company when completing your company tax return. Or if you're a sole trader, you can claim this amount on your self-assessment tax return. So if you ever cycle to a meeting or a work function or to deliver something by bicycle, claiming this mileage can really add up fast and can help you relieve your tax burden. Number seven, you can claim the cost of parking. So this is another one that a lot of company owners never think to claim. You don't have to pay any tax or national insurance contributions on parking charges associated with parking at or near your workplace. Any car parking charges you have to pay as part of a business journey is also tax deductible. Now for all intents and purposes, HMRC defines a business journey as a trip that's either trade or as part of work or travel to a temporary workplace. So if you've got parking charges that fall under this category, you do not need to report them to HMRC. They are allowable business expenses and can be claimed against your company's revenues. There is an exception to remember, however. 
if you give your employees money to pay for parking charges, that counts as employee earnings. That means you'll need to deduct and pay PayYE and national insurance on that money using payroll. Number eight, you can claim the costs of books and magazines. Are you or your company subscribed to a professional trade publication that's completely work-related? Because if so, then you can claim the costs of those subscriptions as an allowable business expense. The same rule applies to one-off purchases of books or other magazines, so long as you keep records and those magazines are trade publications, academic journals, or something else you can prove uh, applies to your job. Subscriptions or annual memberships to professional organizations apply under the same category. But remember, if you're going to claim for a book or a magazine, it must be a professional publication that is related directly to your industry. Glossy magazines are definitely, therefore, not tax deductible. Number nine, you should be claiming business gifts. Giving Christmas gifts to your employees or taking a client out for a special treat? This is generally going to be tax deductible. But there are some important rules to remember. HMRC generally treats business gifts as an allowable expense in the same way it treats entertainment expenses. That means if you'd like to claim a gift as a business expense, the following rules will apply. The cost of that gift must be £50 or less. Provision of that gift shouldn't be part of their contract. The gift can't be cash or a cash voucher, and it shouldn't specifically be a reward for their work or performance. If the business gift in question doesn't match all of the above criteria, you've got to pay tax on it. Now the 10th allowable expense is charitable donations. Has your business given money or any other type of donation to a charity? Because if so, you should be claiming it as an allowable business expense on your tax return. All donations made to registered charities or community amateur sports clubs are 100% tax free. This is called tax relief. And how it works depends on how you donate funds to charities. Charitable donations are normally made through either gift aid, directly from company wages or pensions through a payroll giving scheme, giving away land, property and company shares, or through a will if applicable. All the donations you make to a recognised charity are totally tax deductible. That means all you've got to do is tally up how much your limited company has donated during a given year and then enter that number in the qualifying donations box of the deductions and reliefs section. The 11th one here is that you can claim for employee eye tests. Eye tests aren't exactly the most costly medical examination that are out there, but they are pretty important. And believe it or not, your company can usually claim eye tests as an allowable expense. In many cases, health and safety legislation in the UK means that employees who use a computer monitor or another screen for work-related purposes should be entitled to receive regular eye examinations. And companies are subsequently allowed to claim the cost of those exams on company tax returns. It is worth pointing out that in some parts of the UK, like Scotland, eye tests are already provided free of charge to everybody every two years. So before you start trying to claim this as an expense, consult the relevant health and safety rules in your area to find out how often eye tests are required and if any costs apply. Number 12, you should be claiming the cost of flights. This one is a no-brainer. If you or any of your employees have made business trips that required air travel, the total cost of that travel is tax deductible but you've got to keep records of the purchase and be able to prove that the flight costs were 100% work-related. For example, let's say you are flying to Spain for a two-week holiday and you happen to end up having a lunch with a work client. You aren't allowed to claim your holiday flight as a business expense just because you had one work-related outing. 
The same rule applies if you're on a week's business trip to Paris and you then decide to switch your flights and stay in town for a few more days in order to do some sightseeing. Your flights must be 100% business related in order to apply as a business expense. And finally, number 13, you can claim for any work-related training courses. So another allowable expense you should be claiming is for business training for yourself and your employees. If you want to send a member of your team to a skills workshop, CPD course, or any other educational course that directly applies to their job at your business, the course expenses are all tax deductible. That means you don't have to report anything related to training to HMRC or pay any tax on it. But you must keep records of the expenditure and be able to prove that the training was definitely work-related. Just like some of the other expenses that we have discussed today, there are, of course, caveats. Your company can only claim for employee training if you have paid for it. If you let a member of staff pay for a training course through a salary sacrifice scheme, you won't be able to claim that cost as a business expense. And that is it. So today we have covered 13 allowable business expenses that you can and should be claiming uh, for your company on its company tax returns. These are all definitely worth exploring and you'll honestly be surprised by how much these deductions can lower your company's tax bill. But remember, HMRC introduces new rules and exemptions around expenses every once in a while. And so you should consult HMRC or with an accountant beforehand when preparing to claim for expenses. There are loads of ways to legitimately reduce your company tax burden, but when in doubt, do yourself a favor and always consult a professional. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment. And don't forget, if you'd like to receive more videos just like this one, then please do subscribe. We'll see you next time. Cheerio.